talk about fish keeping today. So, Aaron, what's the biggest lesson that you have gotten from taking care of fish? The biggest thing is just like learning to go slow. A lot of times when you get into the hobby, you want to have like an end product now, or have everything exactly how you envision in your head, and it's just not going to work. You got to actually take your time. You have to learn the details of all the different things. Slow down and do what they need to do, not necessarily what you want right away. What would you suggest when, when someone is just getting into this hobby? Listen to what other people tell them. Ask a ton of questions. Don't just kind of like dive in and make stuff up as you go. Have a reasonable expectation of what your budget can be, what your kind of space you have available, what kind of time you have available. And pay attention to what we tell you. That's always going to be the biggest thing. We're not going to try to steer you wrong or something. Sure. If you don't know exactly what you're getting into, ask about it. It is a hobby. It's about learning. You know, everybody who works here or in other stores that are similar to this, we're all like serious nerds. I mean, when it comes down to it, everybody who works here does it because they enjoy this as a hobby, you know, to a point where they're willing to do it every single day. So if you're just starting to get into it and you're not really sure what to do, where to go about it, first thing I usually recommend to people is walk through. See what you like. You know, whether, you know, the guppies stick out to you or the little shrimp, look around, find that first. Something peaceful, obviously, you can, there's a lot more you can do with those. If you want something more aggressive, that's fine, but we can work around that. What sticks out to you? You know, once you kind of do that, we can get a better idea of what sort of equipment, what sort of tanks and all that we can kind of direct you to and help you to set up. You know, as far as types of tanks and setups that are available, you know, if it's for, you know, a gift for somebody else even, or just your first thing, a box type setup is cool. It's got everything in it you need to get started. A lot of people, when they first get into it, they're intimidated by bigger tanks. They're like, okay, let me go for the little, you know, two, three, five gallon type setup. It's not always the best choice. Not simply because you can't keep all that many fish in there, but from a like, chemistry perspective, a stability perspective, when you have something that small of a volume, anything that does go wrong, it happens very quickly. Say you have a couple snails in there, snail dies. In a one gallon tank, that's gonna spike your ammonia, that's gonna completely destroy your water chemistry, sometimes within hours. If you do that in a 100 gallon tank, frankly, you're probably never even gonna know that it happened. You know, everything's gonna stay stable for you. So it's definitely a matter of juggling what space you have available, but I always tell people go for the biggest tank that you have the budget and the space for. It really is easier to maintain that way. You can't just throw fish into it all at once and done. Uh, that's kind of what we touched on earlier with having to be patient with things and kind of go slowly. Aquariums are actually kind of like an assisted ecosystem. Like, yeah, you have to do some work with them yourself, but they definitely depend on this whole bacterial cycle to process the fish waste. So when you have fish, they're going to be giving off all of this ammonia as their waste product. So if you throw a bunch of fish into an empty tank, that ammonia is going to build up. It's going to choke out the fish. They all die. You have to cycle it. So start with a couple little fish or get, they sell bottles of bacteria that you add to the aquarium. And what that's going to do is get your bacteria bed established. So you'll have your first type of bacteria that takes that raw fish waste, the ammonia, and converts that into nitrite, which is a less toxic form. Then you will have a second set of bacteria that takes that nitrite and converts it to nitrate. Nitrate, you still don't want a ton of it, but it's generally not very toxic until you get to like extreme levels. If you try to rush through that process incorrectly, then you're going to have too much waste production for that bacteria to handle at any given time, and the fish start to suffer for it. I think the biggest thing about the hobby is it kind of gives you a way to bring a little bit of nature home with you and learning about a lot of things that you wouldn't have the opportunity to otherwise. Creating these whole like intricate biotopes if you want to and seeing all these weird interactions and that, you know, like some of the little shrimp and the gobies that pair off and live together. Some of the other animals that go and clean, you know, other fish for you. you know, this, all these little nuances that most people don't get a chance to ever actually see in person. I really like that aspect of having it in home and it kind of helps connect you with nature and science in general which I love and I kind of geek out about regardless. So if you have kind of that science sort of constantly learning kind of mentality it's a really good hobby for that.